Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my review of the latest episode of Supernatural, Gimme Shelter. And I thought that this episode was okay. It definitely had decent potential on both storylines fronts, but unfortunately they were fighting against each other. And of course one of them kind of loses out over the other, and I think that they would have been better episodes apart, one dealing with what we're trying to learn with what's going on with the whole plan against God and Amara versus the Monster of the Week episode portion that we got with Jack and Castiel. I really actually like that one. They really should have just given, just done that and it probably would have been good. Now, it still does not excuse where it is within the order of this season because we should be going and barreling towards ending this series and this gives us more information but it's really kind of just like plopped out there and it's just like ah uh, this is how it's going to be towards the end isn't it just fucking going at it so the cold opening we kind of get uh we see these kids at a soup kitchen and some of them are being pretty much assholes to this one homeless person looking for food. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, I mean, she's like the cleanest, dirty person I've ever seen. They're like making fun of her for being dirty and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, what? No, granted, I've probably seen a lot of grossed out, uglier kind of dirtiness and other kind of things. But even within the realm of Supernatural, I'm like, all right. Even if I'm like considered clean looking, I'm like, He's fine. You're just being dicks. Of course, the pastor dude, uh, pretty much like, hey, treat her with compassion, man. Don't be a douche. Granted, I'm paraphrasing, and he did it a lot better. I actually kind of like the pastor dude and the actor with the guy actually selling it pretty well. But he gives her the soup and everything, and then goes on, and then he hears someone calling his name from an alley, goes to investigate, and finds... Pretty much a teddy bear, kind of like Teddy Ruxpin. I'm like, what the fuck? And then he kind of gets pretty much pulled, and he's pretty much taken out. It's like, holy fucking shit. Then we go to the bunker, and of course, they're trying to figure out what's going on. Sam's going, hey, I think we might have found a case, but don't know really what's going on with it. And Dean's like, hey, I'm looking at Amara, and uh, there was a blackout in Atlantic City. And I'm like, Granted, I know she's the darkness, but it's kind of on the nose to be like, hey, there's a blackout in Atlantic City. And, I mean, granted, they're putting it with other kind of stuff, and I'm like, she's a she's phenomenal cosmic power kind of entity. There should be other shit rather than, oh, there's a blackout. And Dean pretty much just wants to go for a buffet. That's pretty much the extent of their story. And it's, it's really kind of nuts. It's like, all right, whatever. So, they pretty much get set up to do that. Uh, Castiel's like, um, so you're just gonna go off and try and kill Mara by yourself or try and get her to come into an obvious trap to get killed by yourself? And they're like, yeah, okay, that's not fucking stupid whatsoever, but we aren't here as the plot demands anymore, so I figure that's going to accelerate as these last final episodes commence. But as they're leaving, Jack has looked at us and said, hey, this could be like a thing, and... Sam and Dean pretty much just, like, shifted on to Castiel, though, granted, a hunt would kind of get Jack out of his headspace and kind of give him a little different kind of perspective to go on. And it's like, yeah, okay, let's kind of see how that goes. So, from this point on, I'm mainly going to talk about the uh, Cass and Jack story first, and then pretty much bring it back into what's going on with Sam and Dean, because not much happened other than when we eventually get to talking about Amara. So, they kind of go off. They decide to do their, like, FBI kind of thing. Jack's really getting in like, yeah, let's wear matching ties and everything. They get to the crime scene, and we find out that someone kind of smallish went after the dude, evidently carved liar into him, and, like, chopped off all of his fingers and stuffed him down his throat. And, of course, we see them kind of... It's really interesting to see... Usually Cass has, like, Dean or Sam to kind of balance them out. 
because of his strangeness with interacting with humans. It's really kind of cool to kind of see Cass and Jack kind of being like having that role kind of reversed on Cass where he now is the one that has more human interaction than Jack and Jack having to come up with all the fly of what's going on. Because even the police officer lady's like, Jesus Christ, this dude's greener than Baby Yoda. I'm like, okay. I could actually deal with that reference. That was actually a pretty good one. I'm like, shit, they're actually doing some interesting stuff. And this actually worked out pretty well, even though it eventually devolves into kind of strange seven meets saw kind of territory. But it worked. The only issue is it's compacted more. And I'm like, we need more room to, room to breathe here. So they're like, yeah, it's a little bit weird that this kind of happened and that they had speakers to kind of do all this kind of stuff. And they're like, huh, all right, let's kind of try and get some more information on this. They're, of course, thinking maybe a demon or whatnot could be going on. And, of course, they're pulling up all those kind of questions on the police officer. And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about, man. That's uh, that's kind of weird right there. So they decide to get in contact with the Crosshairs demon and kind of get the lay of the land, see if anything's kind of going on. Jack, of course, is going through the social media, and we get some kind of, like, funny bits about the social media. I don't hate the jokes, because he gets uh, Castiel's permission to create a social media profile, and I'm like, all right. Again, I have no issue with it, and it's not, like, the worst. I'm like, okay, you could have... I don't know. I just know when the show was at its peak, it would have been a really good moment. It's not the worst. I'm just like, you could have done better. Your your level is like here. You could have gotten it like further and everything. So Cass is pretty much getting the crossroads demon thing set up. Jack's doing his stuff with the social media. I'm like, what the hell is going on with this? But they get a dude coming out and they're like, why, why are you talking like that? Pretty much imitating Crowley and being kind of like a very kind of douche dude. He's like, uh, yeah... Um, actually, Rowena has told us to not do demon deals, which was kind of interesting. Say, like, let the chips fall, whether it may, philosophy kind of thing, see how the people turn out themselves. It's like, oh, huh, that's kind of interesting. However, this has led to the unintended side effect that this crossroads demon is bored. That kind of pops up at the end to really no effect. It's kind of like, okay, cool. And he actually wants to come along with them, and they're like, no, 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 we got this. So they're pretty much going to go back to the community and see kind of what's going on. Of course, Cash is going to go the uh, law enforcement route. Jack's going to try and do his infiltration kind of thing. Of course, we see him go to talk with the pastor pretty much because you're trying to figure out who the kind of crazy person is in this. And But it's kind of spoiled when you see how kind of slight the person is with what's going on. So it kind of narrows it down when you're actually trying to figure out what's going on. However, that doesn't rule out the possibility that the other people could have been put within a masterminding kind of thing. So there's twists that they could have done. So we see that Cass pretty much learns the lay of the land of what's going on with the pastor of how he doesn't really want to call it a church. It's more faith-based community that no matter who or what you worship, all are welcome and it's more of what you do. I'm like, wow, this dude's actually pretty cool. Well, we're going to have to kind of see how well that kind of works out. Jack, of course, is like, hey, uh, how do I set up pretty much? Fill out the form, all that kind of stuff. Tries to turn it in, learns about, uh, of course, the dude that was killed. Sets off the one uh, chick, uh, Celia, I believe, who's the pastor's daughter. We learn about that. Uh, of course, she lost her mom. Jack lost his mom. They got a bond on that him talking about how he's always letting down his other dads and everything and they kind of get their bonding moment of course the other chick is into him as well it's like okay cool we'll kind of see how this works so while they're doing this we see that one of the other people that have been involved with this community takes from the donation box and gets captured by one of the other people this, of course, goes into the effect that Cass is talking to the dude, learning about the lay of the land of the whole community, and that someone else who had done their tech hadn't showed up in a while either. It's like, okay. And we find out that the one chick that was stealing from the donation box is now in this saw kind of contraption that's cutting off her fingers on her left hand, and that for some reason she's got a knife kind of thing taped in her right hand. 
However, whatever just starts popping up on this screen is just a countdown, and then if she doesn't do it in like three minutes, she loses another finger. I don't know why it's like, oh, you can do the fingers, or you can lose the whole arm by like cutting it off. I guess as some kind of divine punishment for stealing? I'm not sure because since it's condensed with all the other stuff going on, ugh, this portion could have really used more fleshing out of like the person talking to him, giving even just like any kind of basic rules. It's just pretty much like, hey, you lose your fingers or you lose your arm. But we see at some point that it looked like she was attempting to kind of splash her arm or whatnot, but it's like, what are you doing in that kind of situation? But yet we don't get anything inside of the character trying to figure out what's going on. They're mainly just used as a plot object to have these horrendous things happen to them. So they keep going on. We see that uh, the pastor has this kind of group thing welcoming in and he wants Jack to kind of tell his story, but Jack kind of stops. But Cass comes in, does his whole thing, how he used to be kind of like the soldier kind of thing always following orders and then losing of his faith but then he got to another point where someone did restore his faith and he's got his kind of mojo back with that it was like okay and the way he did it without like diving into giant details was really well done it really has shown that Cass understands how to tell the truth without telling the whole truth that would get him screwed over it was a nice kind of opening up thing and also more of a thing between him and Jack to kind of understand that he's he knows what kind of thing he's going through. I mean, shit. He fucking tried to, like, take all the souls of purgatory and become God. And then unleash the Leviathans. Now, granted, those are pretty much crappy seasons as well. Not for the lack of, like, potential in them, but he screwed up as well. And it was kind of nice to see that and see Jack kind of appreciate that. Um... Then we see that Jack's pretty much helping out and everything, and we see that somebody starts streaming the, or not streaming, but has some kind of dongle onto the TV and showing that the one person's getting their fingers chopped off. Like, we we kind of got to figure out what's going on with this thing. And of course, they don't really do too much. Pretty much gets to the effect that uh, the one friend and Sylvia are out. Uh, Sylvia's kind of like messed up about it, and she's like, "Yeah, I'm like." Uh, doing the internet about this kind of thing. It's kind of crazy. And then for some odd fucking reason, well, because the plot needs to be accelerated, she fucking starves her. And it's like, oh, okay, so she's the crazy nut job person. And then we see that, like, she's bleeding out. Uh, Pastor's, like, making sure that, like, she's covered. Cass is like, okay, we're here. Try and figure out what's going on. And, and Sylvia, she went into, like, the back, and the pastor kind of gets knocked off, and we see that, like, there was animosity between her and the dad because of the mother because she was more de more zealous in her devoutness towards God and she's saying that she's doing all this kind of stuff because they're all sinners and stuff like that and I like the uh, pastors and the father's idea more of like yeah saints are just sinners just trying to get through it and everything like, yeah that's a pretty good way to kind of look at it and she's just going like nutso because evidently the dude that got killed in the beginning they did kind of have something but he was gay we even see it and alluded to uh, not alluded but stated to the pastor it's like yeah we're a community that like yeah he had some issues because he tried to find a church that would be like yeah accepting of homosexuality and everything and a god that would accept that it's like yeah it's kind of cool and she just went nutty and she's because something happened with the mother and it's just like holy fucking shit of course Jack's like stop don't do this and of course she tries to stab him and like what the hell are you and we see that Cass has pretty much healed everything going on with the other chick he pretty much grabs her and does the equivalent of a Vulcan neck pinch of pretty much putting her to sleep I'm like what are you it's like well whatever and then he heals the other chick with the fingers I'm like I was wondering if he was going to be able to do that because I'm like are there some, is she just going to grow new fingers, or is he going to be re able to reattach him? But evidently, he's, it was able to just get him back on, and she's like, wow, okay, thanks. And we then see the end of it, uh, the pastor like, hey, listen, 
I haven't been the best father. I'm going to be there to try and help her out. It's like, oh, cool. All right. And so the case is solved. But the thing is, we see that the police officer that is taking her is the demon dude as he flashes the red eyes. It's like, okay, that's kind of a stupid stinger to have because we know that nothing's really going to come of it because we've now got five episodes left. What else are you going to do with it? So we'll have to see what that, if anything of that pops up and if it has any big pertaining to what's going on. It's kind of stupid, but all right. Otherwise, I would have been fine with just like having a monster of the week and like not teasing anything. It's like, all right, fine, cool. So then they're driving off, and Cass is like, hey, can you need help? Just kind of let me know. It's like, I, I have to do this alone because Billy is turning me into a bomb. So that way I can kill Chuck and Amara. And if I do that, I'll die. And then I will have uh, done recompense for what I've done, and Sam and Dean will forgive me. And Cash is just like, that is the stupidest fucking thing I've heard. Now bear with me here. That pretty much is reminiscent to what they were going to do, turning Dean into a bomb and blowing up a mark. Yay! Greatest hits. Copying and paste. Plagiarizing yourself. All right. But that gets into even kind of murkier territory when we then start to go over to what we learn with Sam and Dean. They do, of course, check in with what's going on, be like, yeah, even if she's not in Atlantic City, I get to eat at the buffet. Yeah, okay. I understand Dean loves food, but that's pretty much all we kind of get out of this. Because they did have some conversation with what was going on about him and Jack and what's going on. I was like, eh, whatever, just do what you do. And then they're almost to Atlantic City, but of course shit's going down on like the highway and they find her at a uh, gas station. So, yeah, uh, let's go go eat. And they have pierogies in Pennsylvania. Okay. Now, at first they're trying to sell her helping them take out Chuck. And, of course, Billy's saying that like she's the oldest and most powerful and all that. She's still my brother. We were born at the same time. Pretty much the Big Bang kind of experience. And it's like, okay, so if their birth did the Big Bang... Would their death pretty much destroy the entire universe? Usually that's kind of how cosmic balances work. So if Jack kind of, if Dean had succeeded in killing Omar, would that have also killed Chuck? Since they were when they were born together, that did the birth the birth of the universe and the Big Bang and all that shit? Is this the prime universe? God, it's fucking with the lore. But it's like, nah, I ain't gonna help you. They're like sitting there and Dean's like, you know what, I'm gonna go try another thing. I'm going to try and talk to her. And she's sitting there getting the check and he's like, alright, why did you do it? Why did you bring Matt Mary? She's like, well, I had two reasons. One, I wanted to pretty much give you your mom and understand that even if she had lived, you wouldn't have had that mythical perfect life that you had. The mythical Mary Winchester didn't exist. I gave you something better so you could go through that. And two, I tried she hoped that that would put out the fire in him. The, the anger and all that. Anger has been pretty much the prevailing kind of thing with Dean. And he's like, no, I'm furious. All of this is just orchestrated by an asshole, essentially. You, me, everything is just fucking on stupid strings and being written and all that kind of thing. And you can see, yeah, okay. Because what Amar didn't understand was why Dean was angry. And what that, like, that kind of anger has to have a certain kind of way of release. Because you can't just see somebody angry and be like, okay, maybe if they got their mom, that would fix it. In a certain instance, it could be, if their anger was that they never got time with their mom. And granted, that is part of Dean's anger, but that anger has evolved to, okay, I didn't have my mom. Why didn't I have my mom? Because of all these schemes and everything that demons were doing for the return like the apocalypse for lucifer and all that okay why was that going on because god was writing a story to just fucking do whatever he fucking wanted to do and that is where that anger is and he wants retribution for that whether that's vengeance whether that's justice well at this point it's basically even survival because he's coming to destroy everything that would have been interested to kind of delve into. Instead, we kind of get the surface of like, yeah, I'm pissed off because of this. That, of course, sways Amara. It's like, okay, I'll have to think about it, but okay. Pretty much get her in 
with the whole thing. It really doesn't matter because we at first thought that Jack was just going to take down God, but the whole plan all along was to destroy them both. So even if Dean and Sam were not lying to Amara, which, by the way, if she's some kind of cosmic being that is just even using partial amount of her consciousness to be in a human form, she would have been able to fucking tell that shit almost at this point because of all the different kind of shit she's been doing. Which we are not privy to because we don't know what the fuck she has really actually been doing. And it's just like, okay, you boys just keep doing the same kind of thing and you're just trying to trick this cosmic entity into playing with your ball game and trying to take out God. It's just like, all right, Chuck does need to be stopped, but it's just like, oh, we're going to blow him up with a bomb. Jesus Christ, it's almost like, it's almost like Dragon Ball, where usually they're getting to a fall pack fallback position where they have to use the spirit bomb for certain shit. However, in Dragon's Ball, Dragon Ball's case, eh, cake, Jesus, in Dragon Ball's case, usually it's worked out better, executed better. Not by much sometimes. Sometimes it's like, oh god, we're doing the spirit bomb again. But sometimes you get typed up. In this case, it's just like, oh, we're making another person into a bomb? Okay. That would be really kind of weird thing to do against a cosmic entity because of the different kind of power levels and everything that are going on but there should be other ways to be thought about this never mind that death is now a revolving title that just goes to whichever reaper dies and then takes up the mantle from the previous one it's like jesus Ugh. so that's where they get set up that they pretty much have amara on their side to whatever is going to be happening of course, they get back to the bunker. Cass comes back, like, uh, Dean gets some uh, liquor, and Cass is like, hey, I'm going to go look for other ways to do this, and says, i got to tell you something. So, effectively, he's like, Jack's pretty much trying to make himself a bomb. I'm going to try and figure out another way to kind of do this shit. It's like, great! Let's kind of see how this happens. Now, I don't mind the premise and the different kind of actors are trying to find another way to do this. It's just we have already done a lot of these things and it's a greatest hits kind of thing and it's just not being executed well and it's frankly just like boring. It's like, God, we did this again? So people are going to lie to each other and people are going to be assholes to each other and it's just going to come out to the same kind of wash. So is the universe going to end and then two other beings pop into place and that's going to be Sam and Dean? Or what's going to be going on? Now granted, I don't like... I don't mind the idea of Sam and Dean becoming Guardians. However, you have to do that very, very carefully. Because then they are taking on the roles that they themselves have been fighting against since the show. And it kind of goes against their team free will kind of thing. Is that, okay, yeah, they make this choice and then they have to keep... One of them's pretty much got to write out everything that people... Do, you know as the god and then like the other one's gonna destroy shit or whatnot well we'll have to fucking see how it goes on but it's just getting messier and i'm like come on people just ugh. it really shows that this show should have ended longer long long ago ugh. but we'll see how this works out and what happens to Jack and Sam and Dean and Cass and all that. See if Rowena and other kind of people pop up into effect. Because I doubt that this this is just the next string of the greatest hits. So, in all, I'm glad that we got more lore information about what's going to be going on for the end. I just really didn't like kind of where it's kind of trying to head. And I liked the Monster of the Week episode portion of it. And it really should have been the whole episode or its own episode at some point earlier this season because it really could have had a lot more interesting kind of twists and turns that really it could not do in this one. So those are my opinions on the episode. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, also like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.